Hi guys, it's December 10. Well, actually it's December 11, uh, but I've missed December 10, so I'm going to be doing the December 10th activity today. Um, and then I'm going to do the December 11 activity uh, later this evening. So two activities in one day, but I'll be titling them December 10 and December 11. Um, so, disclaimer aside, the activity that we're going to be doing today is learning about infrared uh, controllers, I think infrared remote, um, which sounds really cool. So I'm going to switch the camera around and we'll take a look at our activity. Okay, so I'm going to go in and find our December 10 bag, uh, which I have found it looks just like this. So this is the infrared remote. I'll just take it out of its packet. I used to make little remotes like this from cardboard uh, when I was younger and pretend that they could uh, freeze time and make things fly. I don't know if I'll be able to do that with this one. We'll see how we go. So what have we got a little bit of... Ah, this might require a battery. Anyway, I'm skipping ahead. I'll pop that down um, and we'll have a little look. So the first thing we need to do is to connect digital pin 11. Wow, a bit of a breeze coming up here. All these things don't blow away. Uh, digital pin 11. There he is, just over here. And we're going to connect that to... Ah, actually. I should have had this cord because we need a. Um, this end's going to go into the receiver. Okay, so 11 plugged in, and then we've got this little uh, infrared receiver. There's the sensor there, and it's going to be plugged in to this pin just here. Oops, the number 13, terrific. Now we're going to connect the 5 volt to the 5 volt pin. So our 5 volt is just there. And we'll connect that to the 5 volt, which is the middle pin here. There we go. Okay. Now connect to the ground, to the ground pin of the IR receiver. Oh, it came, this little packet came with its own core. <laughs> core, okay, well I'll, I'll use one of those now. There we go. And so what do we do? Oh, no, that's <laughs> I've done the wrong thing. That's not meant for this at this stage. Improvising. Should not improvise just yet. <laughs> we get one of these cords. Terrific. And we are going to go from the ground um, just it's, is it oh yeah, just here. Yep. To the ground pin of the IR receiver, which is just here. All connected up. Oops. My number 13 keeps coming out. Make sure I put it back in the right port there. Oh, 11, sorry, 11. Okay, terrific. Now insert an LED into the breadboard. Can do. forget about what's negative and what's positive. Is negative the long one or the short? Oh, okay, uh, shorter is left hand side. So, the short is negative, long is positive. Should be easy enough to remember. Let's see if I can remember it by Christmas. Okay, there we go. Insert the 220 ohm resistor into the breadboard. So these 20, 220 ohm resistors are becoming uh, the standard fare for when we 
to LED. And I'll just check red, red, black background, yep. Okay, so we want to position this so it's in line with the positive. And let's do there. Let's say we do there. Just like so. Terrific. Okay, now connect the LED cathode to the ground. So it's this one here. This is from the negative to the Arduino ground. Okay. Connect resistor to digital pin 13. I knew 13 was going to come into it somewhere. <laughs> Alright, so we've got digital pin 13. Just next to the ground there. And this is going to connect up in line with our resistor there. And that's code time. I'll leave this part of it. Okay, we're going to copy the code, pop it into Arduino. Now, what did it just say here? Cop copy the code and open it into your Arduino. This code won't work without the IR Remote Library. We'll install that next. Okay, so I'm going to just upload that for now. Okay, sorry, copper error compiling for board, you know. Oh, is this where I need to get the library? So open the Arduino Library Manager by clicking on, clicking on Sketch, Include Libraries, Manage Libraries. Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. A bit downloading libraries it needs there. Search the IR Remote Library and install the ADIS. Oh, you can search here, IR Remote. This one here, install. Okay, I, I think that's correct. Upload the code. Sure thing. Oh, I don't think I copied the code correctly. Oh no, it looks like I did. Let's try it now. Okay, all looks good. Uploading. Done uploading. Fantastic. Let's go back. We've installed the code, the remote library. Upload the code and open your serial monitor. Oh, now this is, I do need to put the batteries in here, I'm sure, um, for this to work. So let's pop a little battery in. Oops. Having a struggle here. <laughs> there we go. Little spot for our battery. And the kit came with the battery just for this moment. There we go. Put a little battery in, I believe, like that. Like that. And we want to, uh, it says, Open the serial monitor and view the code that's being sent from your remote control. When you press the up and down arrows, the LED should turn on and off. Try and use another remote control you have at hand. Okay, so I'll go serial monitor. And what board should it be set to? Oh, it should say it in the code, shouldn't it? Um, oh, yeah, 9600, okay. So let's get that set. And... Oh yeah, okay, so it's receiving the code. Uh, is the LED turning on, on and off when I do the up and down? Doesn't look like it, oops.
Certainly the serial monitor is working well. So that part of it's hooked up perfect. I wonder, I wonder what I've done that hasn't made the LED work. Let me just make sure I've got the right pins lined up here. 11, 13. Yep. They're all in place. Now LED here. I think that's all good too. Let me make sure I'm putting it in directly there. Oops. Just make sure it's still working. Serial monitor. Hmm. So turn the LED on and off. I wonder if I'm doing the right code there. Let's go back to see if I've read yeah, FF18E7, that's what it says here that it should be outputting, but it's not outputting that when I tap this. So when you press the up and down arrows, the LED should turn on and off. But then it's not it's not giving that uh, output. Let me just type some other things in here. Because otherwise I could probably change the code, couldn't I? If up up is giving this 3D9A37F. So if I copy this, sometimes my code <laughs> code time doesn't go great, but let's try it. I think this is right. Can I copy that? If I copy from here and paste in there. Okay. And what's down doing? Down is or giving all sorts. Okay. This is like 1BC0157B. So what if I copy that and put that in there? Upload the code. <laughs> See, here we go. Well, I just saw the LED turn on. Serial monitor. Aha! We have a light on and a light off. On, off. When I push the, the, the button here, on, off. On, look at that. I debugged the code and have made it work. Proud, proud moment. <laughs> Great. It would be interesting. I mean, I can see how with another controller, if I pointed that at the little LED, I could probably uh, read, uh, again, read the code, just copy and paste it in to say what the values are for on and off and go from there. Um, I might do that now. I might just run and get another controller and let's point it at it and I wonder if an Apple TV controller will work. Come on, come on a walk with me <laughs> and we'll get another little controller. We'll see. Okay, we've got our controllers. Okay, we've got our controllers, got a, a volume remote and an Apple TV controller. So let's see what these can do. So, am I right in thinking, I'll just sit down, if I point the Apple, this will probably can do something with the MacBook. Say I push the volume button here though. Aha, uh -huh, yep, so it's coming through. Uh, the serial there. So if I copy, paste, so volume up on Apple TV, and we go back to the serial monitor for what down is, copy that, put that here, run the code. Now when I push up 
on the Apple TV controller. Turns on, push down, turns off. Up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> All right, let's try another, another one. Let's use this um, volume controller. So go to serial monitor and Ooh, wow, oh, oh wow, okay, so each up is really doing a different until you get to the topic. Oh wow, <laughs> let's do something different. What if I do the auxiliary button? Oh wow, this is giving all different sorts of signals. Huh, maybe, maybe this is something different. <laughs> <laughs> Apple TV was so simple. On, off, on, off. <laughs> um, well, that's cool. On, I've learned something. I've, I've certainly learned about reading the serial monitor to get the right hexadecimal code from the infrared signal being sent. This volume control has completely puzzled me, but it was great that I started with the Apple TV controller because that worked straight away. Um, and using this uh, really sort of taught me about how to uh, read the code correctly and to make sure that it's all connected up so it works. So thanks for watching this tutorial with me and uh, helping me or being with me uh, to watch the debugging <laughs> of that and I will be back a little later today with the, uh, no, uh, the December 11th tutorial. See you soon.